You are watching Access LaPorte County, Channel 97. Coming up next is the June 20th, 2023 meeting of the Michigan City Common Council Sewer Laterals and Refuse Pickup Workshop. You can find more information for this workshop by visiting www.accesslaportcounty.org. Um, it's uh, about 4.33 and we're going to open up the workshop and uh, I'm looking to see if there's anybody on the uh, Zoom. I don't see anybody. Hopefully they will uh, come in. I talked to uh, Councilwoman Angie Deitch, Nelson Deitch, she said that she was going to zoom in. So I guess what we need to discuss here is any uh, of the funding process. I guess that's the uh, big, uh, one of the big issues here with this uh, project. So Councilman Don Prisbolinski, what would you, uh, do you have any remarks on uh, the memo that uh, was received from the uh, Harris Law Firm on, on the uh, claims and the uh, other information? Well, I just received that uh, memo this afternoon when I came down to the clerk's office. So, I quickly glanced at it. I didn't have time to study the whole back of it. But I guess just in a general statement, I can say that, as I stated at the last council meeting, uh, I have no problem with the ordinance. I think the ordinance is good. I think it uh, helps out the uh, community as a whole. Uh, because to do some of this work is awfully, awfully expensive. That uh, I don't think we need to uh, fund uh, fund this project at a, a quarter of a million dollars every year to keep it that high. And uh, I appreciate the fact of talking to uh, both Mike Lavich and. Uh, Steve Stanford, Sanford from uh, the sanitary district about the amounts of actual laterals that have been changed, what the cost is going to be. And with that information and the information in front of us, uh, I haven't changed my opinion as far as what I think the uh, appropriate amount should be to fund this project on an annual basis. I still think that $250,000 a year is uh, way too much. We can cut that down. And with the monies that we reduce the 250000 from, we can do other projects in the city. OK. Um, we have a couple guests tonight um, from the sanitary district. Um, <laughs> One is the uh, uh, the uh, financial officer and the superintendent, and is is Steve your assistant, Michael? Steve is the operational manager. Operational manager. So I do have a a, a, a question that the. Uh, on this memo that I received also. Now, I thought that we were talking about there was an uh, average of five or six repairs a year. So in this uh, memo, was this was put up by, uh, I believe, Attorney Meyer so he said that there were two repairs in 2021 
and five in 2022. So that's seven right there. And I don't see any any documentation for um, our figures for after 2020. So did did we did we have any repairs uh, last year, Steve? I searched my records and Mr. Cousins' records sure. and yesterday. Good evening, Councilman. I'm Steve Stanford, Operations Manager for the Sanitary District. This list is based on a thorough search of the records I keep and the records that Michael Kess kept on these type of projects. And there were several in 2017 and 2018, but that didn't fit the, the ordinance, so I only dialed it back to actually, I looked back to August 1st, 2019. And the earliest eligible project was in January of 2020. Can you speak up just a little louder, Steve? Yes. Uh, like I said, this was based on a, a thorough search of the records that we have at Sanitary District, and I didn't find anything between August 29th and January 2020. Okay. But you said, how many did you, do you know how many you had in 2017 and 2018? I did not count them. There were several. I would estimate that it was five, perhaps, over that period of time. Okay, so you're, we're at the, we're at the point that there's uh, at least three projects a year, right? On average, that would appear to average, be the case. Right. Okay, so, all right, three projects. <clears throat> I think that, do you guys have anything else? Uh, or, uh, I was looking at the sheet, I don't know if you guys, did you guys see this uh, uh, sheet on, uh, it was sent by uh, Attorney Meyer's office. Can I share that with you? Yeah, I, Scott and I. You, you, you looked at it? We prepared that. Okay, so the uh, 2022, there's um, are, are we claiming that these properties aren't eligible? Because there was, uh, I, I don't even understand this one that's on uh, in Gary, Indiana. That's the property owner's location. Oh, okay. That's the property owner's location. All right. So <clears throat> the, uh, you have one in, tw another one in 2022. So is that one listed or? There are five listed for 2022. Right. Councilman. Okay. So are we, so we're counting all these other, other ones. So there's no, no problem with that. One, two, three, four, five. I see, uh, I see a total of eight. And I do not see, um, I do not see on this list that was provided. Um, oh yeah, I do. I see that one on Pearl Street. Okay. Well, then we have actually or two on Pearl Street. Calls right. Me. There's eight on this sheet, not seven. Do you have any uh, uh, figures? How come, you know, what I, what I was wondering, like, how come all these, these one, 
these uh how come the repairs on Pearl Street are in like the shared cost eleven thousand dollars and and the other one is sixty eight hundred dollars and uh then we have one on Hobart Street that's eleven thousand and does that have what does that have to do with the the depth of the sewers? So there's the, a very the expensive repairs typically involve a full depth cut and usually a, a ten foot deep excavation in the in the street that has to be repaired. Okay. The last one on this list here you'll see was fairly modest at fifty seven hundred and ninety one dollars. All we had to do in that particular case was dig a hole in the sand or repair the pipe and backfill it. Okay. All right. All right. Thank you. That's 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 a pretty good explanation, I would say. All right. Do, do you have any further anything further to add, Michael? Yeah. Can I ask a question? Sure. I'm sorry. Um, Go ahead, Angie. So do as far as how how do the repairs come about? Does the do you guys schedule them or do the does the customer or the resident come to you saying they want to get it done? How what's the step the process to get there so that we can how can we plan for you know however many we're gonna do per year? Is it just hit or miss people sign up? How how does that happen? Uh, these sewer projects, each one of them is unique. The circumstances can be unique. A frequent way that these begin is when a customer calls the sanitary district and says, my sewer is plugged up, and then we investigate. We take a look at whether the public sewer is flowing properly, in which case we normally tell the customer that that's a private issue between in your private sewer from your home to the sewer main. And in those kind of cases, we advise the customer that we do have this program to subsidize parts of the work to help them. Okay. I was just wondering, because we're only averaging a, averaging a couple a year, but I'm wondering, will we have more if we, once we start offering, you know, support for the other half? Will it be more or less, or will I it believe be it's, about the it's, same? Be reasonable to surmise that an increased subsidy would lead to an increase in demand. Agreed. Thank you. Thank you, Angie. Um, the the point I guess with that is usually the uh, citizen or the person who's or the property owner that's having problems with their flow usually calls the sanitary district and then the whole ordeal starts. You guys go out and camera it and <clears throat> see what's going on there, see if it's your responsibility on the uh, main and then try to surmise if it's where it's actually the break is at. Mm -hmm. Because I think everybody realizes that if there is a problem on the citizen's property, it's their response, totally their responsibility. So um, I think that was the point is, is that as our infrastructure gets older and we don't do any sewer projects that need to be done that have been identified, that the cost could average two or three a year or it could be any any amount once uh sewers start um to degrade and also depending on where the trees have been planted because i think that's something that we have omitted that that needs to be looked at and identifying the, at a later date in time identifying where the laterals are at and where the trees are at in, in some of these right-of-ways because trees have a direct influence on breaking into the tiles and opening them up. So, you know, I didn't want to 
get too many things in this ordinance at this time. I just wanted to try to address what's going on right right now with you know getting people's services back in line and a lot of the a lot of the costs. And I'm hoping that by through this program that you guys will be able to maintain it. And I know that right now the way it's structured is that you have the homeowner go out and get bids. Am I correct? It can go either way. Okay. Over half of the projects we manage completely, we solicit the bids from the qualified contractors. Okay. And then we inform the customer how much the bid is for and write an estimate for how much we believe their share will be. And we do a written agreement with the customer. Okay. And you have a list you have a list of, of people that you like to that you feel are dependable providers, correct? And there's about a dozen contractors that we typically solicit. Um if you look at one of these, the, the more recent job on Pearl Street. Yes. Nine contractors were solicited and we got one quote. Is that a fact? Yes. Okay. All right. That's so is, is the, uh, with that being said, was it the fact that people didn't want the work or they looked at it and it was too, uh, did anybody give you a reason why they didn't want to bid? Not specifically. Okay. All right. All right. Do you have any, any more questions? Uh, uh, Councilman Don Przbolinski on that? No, I think uh, the report is pretty self-explanatory. And yeah, I don't have any other questions. All right. So I think that I appreciate all the information that you guys got together, and I, I appreciate the work of uh, Attorney Myers and I and uh, I, I know that that's I think it's a program that we need to get uh, started and uh, moving down the road and maybe look at evaluating what sewer projects really need to be identified to get done. I have a question. Yes, Angie, go ahead. <clears throat> I'm sorry, I didn't. I'm sorry, I didn't see. So the bid was that for individual project, or did you collectively bulk a couple of them together? That was a single project. Um, these projects are typically urgent, and in some cases, emergencies. If the customer has no flow at all, okay. So we have to take these as they come, and as I said. Uh, earlier each one of these projects is, has some unique aspects to it okay thank you thank you councilwoman deitch thank you all right so i guess what what that will move forward and talk about um the uh problem with collecting waste does anybody have any other <laughs> okay any... do we have any other comments on uh the sewer lateral projects yes please okay yvonne hoffmaster city controller so i, I i'm just curious this is only for repairs on public property, correct? Correct. Um, did we ever think to ask the sanitary district to revise their resolution? Or I don't think they're in such dire straits that they need the city to help them fund their repairs. Well, the only way I'm gonna address that is uh, I don't really know where their financial 
Uh, is that maybe you do? I have a, a direct response. Let me, let me finish, Dave. But I will say this. We've been working on this for how many weeks now? And this thing needs to get rolling. And this is, uh, I don't appreciate you coming up and giving us that kind of uh, question at this point in time. Yeah, I, well, I've asked well, this question of the district. And nobody approached them to, I, I'm, I'm just curious. I don't see a problem with reimbursing the people, you know, from August of 2019 forward. But going forward, can't we just ask the district to revise their resolution that they pay for the repairs on uh, public property well, and the how, resident excuse me. pay on, on I, Here's what, I, I, what I say to that is that. I'm done. I don't control the sanitary district. The mayor is in charge of the sanitary district. And if that was a thought that you had, that maybe you should have went to the mayor to discuss that with the sanitary district, Ms. Hoffman. Okay. Well, that's how I can only address that. I can't, I personally can't tell them or the city council really can tell them what to do. They're their own entity and the mayor controls them. And Councilman, I can't speak for Attorney Meyer, Yeah, but I believe what he would say about this is that by state statute, we cannot do work on private property. Oh, I don't think Yvonne was talking about private property. Okay, but I'm, look, I, that's, I'm not trying to, I think that your question is good, but I think my answer was also good because I think that by this time, the mayor should have addressed it. And we're trying to work through this thing the best we can. I appreciate your comment. Thank you. All right, now we're gonna move on. Angie, do you have anything else? Brian, do you have anything else? Is that Dahlia up there? Yes, that's Dahlia. I have nothing. Uh... Paul. Okay. Thank you. Dahlia, do you have anything? No, nothing. I, I actually joined late. I was having some computer issues. So sorry about that. Um, okay. Well, you look well, I, like you're. I do, I do have something. So, okay. So I, I heard the question um, that came up, but my. And I kind of agree. We let the sanitary district off the hook on a lot of different things, but I think to start to do something now is the right thing to do. I think with some of the amendments that um, that are in here, um, we can, you know, I think the amount, I know Don and I have spoken about the amount maybe, you know, uh, changing the amount, but I think we could put something in here, maybe that addresses uh, um, request to take the necessary steps where we have to, you know, to transfer and to, I would say transfer and maybe do an and or statement. Um, referencing the sanitary district to take some type of action maybe too that way we have two pools of money but i agree maybe we can go back to that and and talk through that with the uh, sanitary district at some time in the future but in the meantime um i was hoping that we could lower the amount um for the request i know we said we got sixty thousand dollars I'm sorry, I got my camera. We got $60,000 in the memo that would be retroactive. And then um, we put 250,000, but I, we didn't, as far as annually, I'll be more committed to, um, as suggested, 100,000 and then revisit it annually or something like that. Yeah, that's uh, we're going to try to get that incorporated here this evening and uh, 
definitely about that yearly review. I, I thought that was a good thing that we discussed earlier. And now that we have the actual figures, I'm, I'm looking, I'm, I'm having a tendency to look, but y'all, we also have to remember that if one of these streets are, uh, start having problems, it, it's, it's like a snowball effect. So I think that we could, uh, do something with the money amount because when I originally wrote this legislation, I really didn't know the magnitude of how many people were affect would be affected. So I, I think that we can we can move on the uh, total amount in the in the fund. Now the public, I, I do have a question. Maybe the Senate he he mentioned that maybe it's some, something to do with work, but this is only these are only issues that are in the public on our property, right? Correct. So I don't think that would be an issue from the sanitary district standpoint of being able to support paying um, some type of, uh, fun, you know, amount towards it. I think, I think a lot of times they we just ignore the fact that they got money that they can use. Um, but every time we turn around, now we're dealing with refuse and we're buying, you know, different things. So I'm like. Where is their coffers at and what kind of money do they have? And has the CFO shared any information with us? Maybe we need them to start telling us some of those things. So I, I don't I don't disagree with uh, anything that you said, Councilwoman Deitch. And um, I think that this is a starting point and that it can't like we talked about it can be reviewed on an annual basis and it's a work in progress on what we're doing because I don't disagree with you on uh, we have to look at the financial outlook and what we have been uh, doing and what we're going to do in the future with this uh, uh, re not refuge but uh, well, I guess we won't say refuge pickup from uh, properties. So I'm gonna I'm gonna move so we can start talking about uh, the truck refuge the refuge issue so we can get some groundwork, get some facts and and uh, some figures. Hopefully, we have some to talk about this refuge. Thank okay, you. So he wants to say yes, Michael. Come up here. You don't. Talk to us. Well, just a quick note, Mike Milatovic, I'm the general manager at the Sanitary District. Just a quick note about the money that we do collect from user fees, which is for the wastewater treatment facility and the collection system. Um, our operating expenses are significant, large, and, and we also have equipment that's that actually passes service life. For example, the equipment that we use for dewatering sludge was installed, I believe, in 84, and we've managed to maintain it, keep it operational and so forth. But at some point in the not too distant future, that's going to have to be replaced. And that's probably going to be somewhere close to a million dollars, perhaps. We have digesters where we uh, process the, the raw sludge uh, to a point where we can dispose of it, land apply it, and so forth. Uh, right now, we have uh, cleaning that's going to be taking place that's going to cost, I believe, about 400000 $450,000. So when we have to spend money, and those are just some of the uh, large items right now, in addition to, for example, our tertiary system sample filtration is being refurbished, uh, the electronic controls, because all of this equipment is old, uh, especially by today's standards with the electrical controls and the digital age, 
all of our head works is going to have to be updated. Uh, so when we talk about doing these repairs and updates, we're talking hundreds of thousands of dollars. So what appears to be a significant amount of money that we have, I believe we're required to have a certain amount in reserve uh, just to be responsible in how we operate the facilities. But that money goes very quickly. So uh, our, you know, Scott Kistler is our financial officer, does a good job of being a steward of the money and and assist us to keep the expenditures uh, to a reasonable amount, what is necessary. So when, uh, um, when we think about the amount of money that we collect, it's, uh, it, it goes very quickly when we encounter these situations that we have to uh, we have to correct in order to comply with the, our operating permit, which is issued by the state. So, just to keep in mind, and if I don't expect there would be any any issue of uh, you know sharing insights about our finances, but uh, you know the large sums of money, whatever sums of money we have. We need that as 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 a, a fund that we can go to when we get these emergency situations where we have to upgrade systems in order to stay in compliance with our permit. So just something to keep in mind. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, with that being said, then I, I would request, um, and I can guess I can get this from the controller's office, how much, because I, I know we have um, our ITs in there, uh, it's under sanitary district. I know uh, I'll be interested in how much we spend in overtime and all those different things because we sign off on your budget, but we don't get really have a a conversation about it. So, you know, it's what it is. And I think that that's something that this year that we really need to be watching and understanding, especially with the refuse department being with the sanitary district, but both. Know how much is spent in overtime and all those different things because we're tearing up equipment and doing different things and things are breaking down. We're not tearing up, but things are breaking down. But I'd be curious how that works with the sanitary district as well because we don't know. Um, so you know, it says in in the code book that there's supposed to be this one fund that you have that, you know, so I, I think there's a lot, a lot of questions maybe, and that's why, um, you know, you know, when we had this project, you know, the sanitary district, they want to kick in, we want to do annexation. So I think all eyes are on y'all for both departments now. And so with that being said, I, I would, I'm going to send a list of questions that I have for, for you all and for your finance guy to share with us. But I appreciate that. Thank you. Yes, absolutely. And just in closing, if I could address. I just want to say one. Okay, go ahead. Andrew, uh, on a monthly basis, I go through all our financials with our board. And it goes by each of the funds. We've established funds for the sanitary district, the actual sewer part. But refuse, we have limited funds. It is based on tax revenue. It's not user rate. And I go through that and I would welcome you to come to our next meeting, which is week from tomorrow. And you'll see we go through every fund. And, and actually, I will pick you up on that, but probably separately yeah. just to sit down and make sure I understand instead of yeah. the board time. Yeah, just come on by and I'll show you what I show them. All right. But we do go through it on a monthly basis, though. So, okay. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. So, let's uh, get into this uh, refuge. Uh, Let me make. Can I have one more comment? Yes. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, I do. I have one more comment. And that, was, that was a good comment that the uh, city controller brought up that possibly the uh, sanitary district could look at spending more money on, on some of these projects. And that may be possible, but, you know, the sanitary district was here back in January asking for a million dollars of ARP money. 
for garbage trucks. Uh, they're before us again for $250,000 for this uh, refuse truck. Uh, to me, it doesn't sound like they have a whole lot of money. I don't know exactly how much money they have, but it's still a good point that the mayor, the city controller, I guess that's legal or however it can be legal, is to sit down with this department or call this department down to the mayor's office and say, hey, show us your books and tell us what you got. You have $100,000 extra. Do you have a million dollars extra? What is your reserve in your department? And then go from there. We just, you know, don't start here in the, you know, the halfway through this ordinance reading and say, hey, we need to do this. I mean, that, you know, this administration has been in office now three and a half years. And if they haven't sat down with the district and said, hey, what is in your books? Can we see your books? Then I say that they dropped the ball a long time ago. But that's what needs to be done. Departments talking to each other. The head financial person of the city sitting down and talking to the financial controller of the sanitary district and show us what you got. So I think that needs to be done and needs to be scheduled. And then maybe we can move forward with whatever else we have coming before us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman Don Przybylski. Um, all right, so now I would like to get into a discussion about this refuge uh, problem we have. Um, Steve, do you have any figures on how much we're spending, um, not a year, but on a, a quarterly basis on, on some of these refuge pickups that we're making on, uh, say, people flipping homes and uh, landlords throwing all the rubbish out in the alleyways on these rental properties, stuff like that. I mean, th this is what I've been seeing that <clears throat> what's going on in uh, a lot of people putting stuff out on the street and thinking that the sanitary district should pick it up when, and I'm not saying that somebody, a resident who's got a, uh, needs something picked up, shouldn't get it picked up. But, you know, people who are running a, a, a business, well, let's say for a profit, you know, they're, they're an endeavor to make, make money. And, uh, if they're having constant pickups at their home, or their place of business, I don't think that this we should be subsidizing. That's actually we're subsidizing them. That may be a, uh, and I don't think that's a far stretch because there's a consistent stream of individuals putting out stuff on on these on these rental properties, and we have had uh, people come to us with uh, they want to inspect properties, but I think that we have a, a bigger problem when it comes to this refuge, because then you get into tying up, <clears throat> not only going and picking up the refuge, going and picking up and taking it to wherever you guys take it and get it weighed and paying the fee. But here's the other side of that coin. There's an ordinance that People who are doing these things are, I believe there's an ordinance that is supposed to have a, uh, should have a dumpster and, and they're not being, it's not being taken care of. And I, that's not nothing with you guys. I mean, I just wondered if you guys had a, a grip on how much this is costing us. And I don't, I mean, maybe you might have to, get into some detail uh, informational work with the inspection department on who were making pickups at this home 
or this house or this property, I'll put it. What we're making pickups at this property. Is this a rental? Is this a rental? Or is it a residence? You know, there's to me there's a big diff. So I don't know. I know I don't want to. What do you got? What do you got for us, Steve? I was just going to say it's very difficult to cost account for uh, partial truck loads or say three pieces of furniture uh, as as the process goes on during the day. We usually have probably thirty or forty what we call special pickups every every week. Okay, and if it's you know a, a couch or a recliner. It, it's difficult to keep records that cost account for that particular item. Okay, well, to me, if it's it's a couch or a recliner, that uh, most likely is a, a small pickup. And I know that you make a bunch of them, and it makes a big pickup. But I don't. I think what you're saying is true. It's difficult, but. <clears throat> What I'm looking at is the big pickups and people that just throw trash out on the right of way and don't don't even don't even give you a heads up that they need a pickup. See, there's a lot of abuse going on here and the residents are subsidizing it. And <clears throat> I think that there's uh for profit entities. And we we just got to try to keep track of who who they are, what's going on here, on and the cost factor. We, and and mm -hmm. see, here's what I'm getting at: if we don't keep track of them, how can we cite them? How can we tell them? You know? I have. I'm sorry. And, oh yes, Angie, go ahead. I, I just want to bring up a couple of things I asked um, at a previous meeting, and um, also so. You know, even with those pickups, we should know how many it, there should be a database. I hope there's a database of all the pickups and the addresses that we have. But I think if you roll the truck and we it's a communication thing with the residents and the public, anything outside of the spring cleanup and anything outside of the fall cleanup, uh, I think there should be a fee, a roll truck fee. And regardless of the size, now if you get there and it's something extreme, but I think for additional pickups outside of those those things that are actually set in stone, we know spring cleanup, we're going to be busier at that time, we're going to run overtime at that time. Outside of that re resident, you better have your stuff together because you're going to get a $50 fee. You know, something basic, simple, and then you get into those big ones, you find them. But all this, you know, we're rolling, rolling trucks, and and I just want to know, like you said, we're averaging that. But I would think we will have a database of every single address that we go do pickups on. Because my question was, how many citations have we written? And the and the answer was hardly any in the last year. That that was the the answer. Didn't give me a number but very, very few. And, you know, I, we had a trash inspector for a reason. And I'm like, okay, so if there are no citations, have any letters gone out? What, what has that person been doing for the last year? If we have someone who's, that's their responsibility. If they're riding around, and looking at this stuff, if, for all these complaints to happen, and we have somebody who's a full-time employee getting paid to do that job, you know, but now you had to run weekend crews to get it all cleaned up. What's well, been going on for the last however time? So those are the questions that I had is, you know, that's a revenue stream that can help pay offset some of these things, but we got to change the, the the way we operate and communicate with the residents, because just like Councilman Paul said, they're taking advantage of the situation because we've allowed this to happen. Just call whenever you feel like it. And then when you don't get someone to answer the phone or you don't get a return call, then you, I'm, I'm guilty. We get mad, right? We get mad. 
So we got to change the way we we operate. But I, I that was my question. How come no citations, full time employee, and the garbage was backed up the way it was? It was just a disgrace. And nobody had any answers. I mean, because I was like, well, how many pickups do we do a week? You know, how many citations are we giving out a week? I, I don't want to willy nilly give out citations either, because then it looks like we're just doing it because of all the complaints. It still has to be structured. And and, and I, I thought there was an ordinance or something that did that already. And if we need to change that, let us know. If there's something we need to do on the council end to change the ordinance to fix the fees or whatever it is, versus just us kind of haphazardly, you know, you know, digging at folks and doing that. I, I guess I want to know what your plan is for, you know, for the future. You know, what steps are y'all taking so that we don't get in this situation again? Because it was just a lot. And we don't want every council meeting to be um, bashing the refuse because, like I said, they're out there rain, sleet, or snow. But again, you told us too. They had large workmen's comp claims. I want to know how much we've spent over the last three years for that too, because I think all those things are important for the safety of our workers. So those are my comments, and I'm just going to leave it there. And you guys tell us what the plan is and what you need from us so that we can not go down that path again. That's Thank you. Question. Okay, Council and Don, um, President Bolinski. Yeah, uh, as far as the special pickups go, do we have a record keeping system for special pickups? Yes. Okay, it's computerized? Yes. Okay, uh, I'll, tell you, I'll tell you what, uh, can you email the last quarter uh, of special pickups requests from that system? We should be able to do that. Members? We, should be able, we should be able to do that. Okay. And also, the refuse inspector, does he work directly for you guys? Or does he work for the street department? And who does he work for? He does work for us. And <laughs> an example, last week, a contractor put a bunch of broken cabinetry out on Franklin Street, sort of expecting us to pick it up. And in a case like that, the refuse inspector talks to the customer and explains, listen, you got to get this out of here. This is not on us. And it, it was in, in two days, it was removed. Okay. And as Councilwoman Dyke said, has this individual written any tickets yet? Yes. Okay. Can you send copies of the tickets that he has uh, written? I believe we can do that. Just to see what he's done. Okay. All right. Uh, and basically with this new truck, and uh, I had a conversation with Steve and Mike, uh, it seems to me that we do need this new truck. Uh, it's going to be operated, what, one, one driver, and that's all you need? For this vehicle that it that is one way that it can be done yeah it might be helpful in some cases to have a laborer to assist the, the driver operator okay do you have the manpower to have this truck be, because it sounds like we so we ran a lot of overtime to catch up and so my question is Yes, you need one person, but we got these workman cops. I, I just, I'm trying to understand the root of it. I, I think the root of some of that is the labor, you know, labor intensive picking up couches and things. I do agree with that. But I guess I'm trying to understand because how are you going to, this is going to operate outside of the regular routes on certain days and can other departments use it? I mean, I'm I'm trying to understand because it's not it's gonna be down. It's not gonna be used as much if we are still running our, our garbage pickup service the way we are and and having um I don't know how much um overtime we have, but I'm curious to that. How what's the plan going forward with this truck? 
we would use it for certain types of special pickups that it's well suited to to pick up. I wouldn't rule out the idea of allowing the street department to pick up large piles of brush with it because at the moment they have to have a, a wheel loader operator and a dump truck and, and a laborer. So it's like a crew of three with this particular truck. Once we get good at it, we can, we can do this, these kind of pickups with one person, which reduces our, our need for labor. Are you going to have to hire somebody to operate this truck, or do you have somebody on the staff right now that's going to be ready to go and operate this vehicle? We have several operators that would be qualified to run it out of the box, although they would you know, want to have a little practice to get good at it. Yeah, but you won't have to go out and hire somebody to operate this truck. Not specifically, no. Okay. I have two two oh, comments. Okay. One is in um piggyback backing off of Councilwoman Deitch in regards to the additional use of this vehicle of this truck, will the um other departments be able to utilize it? And again, we are still talking about additional needs of equipment. So it will eventually probably come before the council that there that the street department is requesting a tandem to assist in these pickups because currently what they're using right now, um, they're using the manpower and they have to climb on top of the trucks, which is posing a health, health and safety issue. So they're seeking for a new vehicle as well. So do you foresee that also being tied in that will also be able to assist you if that was to pass for the um, truck that you're requesting? We work very closely with the street department. In many and that's what, that was conveyed. And that's one of the reasons why they were uh, seeking um, for a tandem as well. And I don't know if any of you uh, received though that information um, from Mr. Smith regarding the request for that. And so my thing is, it's, it's taking me back. There is a need, but again, I'm just gonna put this out there. We've been asking, I've said it repeatedly. We got budget hearings that's getting ready to come up within the next month and a half. We need to know these things now. We should have known about this. If these, if this equipment your, your, um, was deteriorating and wasn't pliable to carry out its duties so that we knew that this is something that we should have been anticipating and we probably could have looked at this before now. So if this is something else that you may foresee, not just from the uh, request that you're looking for now for the vehicle, is there any other request for equipment that you're going to need because th these requests is just coming out the woodworks now we have an extensive grant application in with NERPSI mm -hmm. to essentially replace our garbage truck fleet mm -hmm. at about a 20 percent match if i recall correctly that is correct yeah yes so and there's no other additional appropriations that would be available so these funds um, for that particular vehicle that's um, that's coming before the council will be coming out of the riverboat. I'm biting my gums on this because I just wish that there was another way that this could be funded instead of coming out of the riverboat. Mm -hmm. I mean, well, they came to ARPA, but again, ARPA is a once in a lifetime funding source that should be used on things that we should look back in 10 years from now, most of the stuff that we purchased for ARPA is gonna be gone. We're gonna be like, poof, it's gone. It's I gonna agree. be a bunch of equipment and a bunch of stuff that's uh, depreciated out, that's garbage, and we're not gonna be able to show anything that we did significant and we have a, a you know look at you know our website our different you know how we do permitting all this stuff that we could have done with that money at least we're going to do something with the small businesses and housing at some point but yeah i i was against arpa riverboat this is something that's citywide and it's a citywide issue 
And, uh, you know, I just don't like, I, I agree with you, Councilwoman Tillman, that I agree with you that it seems like every time you turn around, there's a request now. Go talk to the council, go ask them for ARPA, go ask them for this, go ask them for that, with no rhyme or reason that, like, no one knew that these were issues ever. It just keeps dropping on us. Yeah. I guess I don't like that, but outside of that, I mean, that's the only reason why I would I I, I would support something coming out of River, Riverboat is because it's a citywide issue that is something that to provide essential services and to keep garbage off the street. That was the only reason why um, we suggested it because we already exhausted our rainy day fund on another, on the fire trucks that we needed. So it seems like everything is just coming to a head on equipment. Are you, are you good, Angie? I'm good. Um, so there's a lot of things, there's a lot of things going on here, but you, you know, here's, here's what I would like to say to the council and, and to this, you know, sanitary district and whoever might watch this. There's another player, another department that's not here right now. And that's the planning and inspection department because th they should be working hand in hand with the refuge because they know uh, who who's who out there on on these uh, people who are <clears throat> dumping their uh, trash not or their re refuge out of their businesses onto the right of ways out into the alleyways. But here, here's what I will say: If we don't, if we don't start working together as a as a team, and we start imposing any kind of fees, what we're going to have is we're going to have like it turned into the the late '70s and the '80s of we're going to have a real we're going to have junk laying all over, and I, what I mean is people going out and throwing their stuff out on the side roads in the in a say the east side of town in the agricultural areas so i mean we have to look at this on how it's going to impact and what how we're going to move forward and and i think that we need to sit down have another meeting with the sanitary district before um we get to the budget hearings and to find out what, and you guys need to come up with a plan on what we're doing. And I know one thing that really bugging me is that not moving forward on these uh, sewer separation projects that have been studied and restudied that would help reduce the inflow, inflow of stormwater into your uh, plant. And you know that's just a that's a small segment but that is part of the big picture and then getting with the inspection department because steve your your statement earlier about that uh i think it was in the 3000 block of franklin street well there was no citation issued for that at, at that residence I know that for a fact, because you know what I was told, that's one of our good landlords. So if that's one of our good landlords that should know the rules, okay, and if they don't, then maybe the inspection department needs to write up a brochure and show them the ordinance and start delivering it to these uh, landlords that are the problem here. Sorry, Mike. No, uh, I just wanted to uh, respectfully address the council as far as on our needs with the equipment for refuse. Our needs have not changed since the last time we addressed the needs with a, an accounting of the number of units that we have, their age, and so forth. Um, and we appreciate the allocation from the council of the ARPA funds. And, and the money for the uh, 
two trucks that we're purchasing. And we were supposed to have delivery of those trucks, uh, I think it was originally set in January. We still don't have it. Uh, the supply chain, uh, different components of the trucks are not available. The date keeps getting set back. We are expecting them to arrive now in early part of July. So our situation has not changed through, in this case, no fault of our own because we have no control on when we get these trucks. Equipment is just not available. Uh, so when, when they do arrive, it should take quite a bit of strain off of the, our, our, our inventory of, of uh, equipment. And the one thing, while I'm at it, just a comment about some of the overtime issues, uh, much of that has to do with having adequate staff and being able to find, for example, CDL drivers, because the wages that we pay are simply not a magnet for people to come to Michigan City and drive a, a truck that requires a CDL. So in any case, uh, well, these are just some uh, parts of the reality I have to contend with uh, to uh, get the job done and, and cover the all the needs that we have as far as with the equipment and 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 staffing. So the one thing is the two new trucks that we're we're purchasing are side loaders, one arm operating, which will also help us in reducing the. Uh, the staff that not reducing the staff but being able to uh being able to allocate staff in a more efficient way so anyway no one's going to be put out of job it's just that we're going to be able to actually do some things and hopefully reduce some of the overtime i just have a suggestion yes it appears that since we have new residents that's coming into the city that may not be familiar, then we have those that are longtime residents that may not be knowledgeable or is aware that if I'm putting out something like a couch or chairs of some sort that I need to call in to have that picked up or for a special pickup, I would suggest if they if you all could do a one-time notification to go out and that explains what that process is and when someone should call in. And then from there, once you do that mass mailing, set a date effective, let's say September 1st, then if you implement or to increase the additional fees, if there's anything over the special pickup, the two special pickups, then they, they're now aware, at least on the city's end, we know that we intentionally try to make sure that we notify our constituents what the process is in order to have um, their refuse picked up and what the penalties will be if they don't follow that process. Yes, I, I couldn't agree more. Thank you very much uh, for that. And actually, we have a press release that is being reviewed that will articulate those points and and perhaps even have more of a outreach uh, to the public so they have a clear understanding exactly what is what is expected uh, of each residence uh, you know what their uh, uh, money uh, is paid what what is uh, covered, so to speak, on what they're allowed to put out without expecting a charge? And then if there are other items like a sofa or a couch or whatever that uh, explaining exactly what that would entail. Mike? So, yes. Could you, uh, and that's a good suggestion, Councilwoman Tillman, couldn't we put a mailer out in the, uh, water bill with right. citing the, the uh, application of the codes and what what they're aware of and then boom it, it's out there and they know if they got a lot of stuff that they they have a responsibility that we we have to come up and say okay we got spring cleanup we got fall cleanup okay 
I was always under the impression from Mr. K that you're allowed one special pickup a, a year, all right? And I know it's not written in stone. So I guess we got to come up to a meet some kind of a, a medium that says, okay, you're paying for the service and we're picking up your refuge and, uh, you know, how to measure how much we're going to charge somebody if they have uh, a special need or if we're going to allow one pickup or, or if we're going to allow to have them get picked up a couch or a sit, a chair. So, you know, it's, it's, I think we have to come up to that medium. Okay. Yes. All right. And I think yeah. that that's, that's easy enough to do. And uh, then we'll move forward. I can speak yeah. with the water department. We have good communication. Perhaps we can, they can accommodate well, fire to be attached to the bill. the inspection department on uh, what the rules are in the code, you know, that, that they're supposed to enforce and just put it out there. Okay. I think we can make that All right. happen, hopefully. Are you are you good with that, Miss Miss Tillman? Okay. All right. Thank you for the feedback. Thank you. Okay. So I think that we made a lot of good points tonight. And I think that by moving forward, we'll uh, come up with some information and try to get the inspection department involved with this, this process also. I wanna thank everybody who attended and for the input tonight. Thank you. And I think that we've accomplished our goal. Thank you. Meeting over.